Hey there YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how to remove your lower unit on your Mercury 115 horsepower 2 stroke. Um, this one has the 2 plus 2 system. I've uh, been hitting these bolts with heat and PB for the past few days just to make sure there was no surprises but I guess we will see. So there's only five bolts. One hidden up in here and two on each side here. Don't forget to put it into forward gear. When you know it, a 15 for this one too. Of course I couldn't get them all out without resorting to the universal wrench. a little bit of goo in the threads. Looks like it might be a Loctite of some sort. Alright, I left one bolt in. Alright, I'm having some trouble getting it off, so I'm going to use a rubber mallet. It is pretty heavy, I have to say. And it peed on me. So this lower unit has not been serviced since I bought it uh, five years ago. And that's pretty much what it's going to look like. I finished carrying this and all my tools inside. And uh, so I took a board and put the boards in the vise first and then gently put the lower unit in without scratching the skag on the metal of the uh, Vice there, and seems to be holding pretty good. So now I can get to work on it. First step, I'm gonna take off the housing bolts for the water pump. I'm gonna use a wrench. All right, either that's really easy, or I just broke it. I think that one's just really easy. And try the next one.
This one has like tons of gasket sealer or just corrosion on it. And this one's to more towards the prop, so I wonder if it's the same issue I'm going to have with the other side is the corrosion locking the bolt in. Rust. That actually, that actually looks like rust. Weird. Alright, moment of truth. How much of my impeller is left? housing has some score marks right here. Maybe a rock got in. Or... Well, other than that, I don't know why it overheated. Wow, this is still super rubbery. That's amazing. After five years. That's assuming the dealer that I bought it from used changed it. So you can see that the back of this gasket is just shredded. So that's probably why it's so corroded all in here. Uh, either that or I didn't notice there was any gasket here on the top. Almost like water was allowed to climb up the drive shaft here. I'll have to look into that. Still can't get this thing off. All right, so. Apparently the reason there's so much corrosion on the drive shaft here, I don't know if it's corrosion, I guess I just call it like calcium buildup or something, uh, is because there's supposed to be something on top of here called a slinger, and it's a gasket that sits on top of there that just keeps water from and debris from pushing up and out of here, and so it looks like without that the water just kind of comes up here a little bit and gets us dirty. I did have to fish the uh, water tube seal out of the top part of like the shaft there, just above this. Alright, it's just taking a little help. That thing does not want to come off. Nope. Keyway. Where's the key? drop down in the engine that would suck. This is a Mercury impeller 47-43026. There's the top of the housing there and uh, I'm gonna have to clean that up. This was sitting in here just like this and I lifted it up and that just looks bad. Now I'm using a rag to get surface corrosion off of this. Let's see where I really have to scrub. I'm going to take a plastic razor blade, get the rest of it off. put the first gasket on here and you'll notice uh, there's only one way to put this on and have the holes line up so that doesn't look right so we'll flip it around and that lines up just right all right all right and then you take your metal plate actually I don't think you can do this wrong either. So we do it the right way. Let's see. Looks like the holes line up. So you really can't do this part wrong. The only thing you can do wrong is put them in the wrong order. It goes the one with the D and the metal plate. And there'll be one that has a little line of red gasket material. 
the, the biggest uh, the biggest hole there. And I think this goes up. So that red or whatever color that sealant is goes up because again it won't work upside down. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Alright, now I'm cleaning the threads on the bolts up. easier to get it started inside of the cup. Seriously, this is like the whole hardest part of this whole thing. You'll see here that the previous person put literal silicone here uh, between the water pump housing uh, and the exhaust. Uh, I mean, it looks like it's working really well, but I'm going to also put a little RTB right here on this plate where it mates. So I'm just going to tighten up these bolts. This is that thing that was missing before. I'm just going to assume it's supposed to go on here. Alright, time to put it back on the boat. Alright, and before I put this back together, I'm cleaning up the threads with a nylon brush. And I'm going to put some blue 242 thread locker on them. Not so the bolts don't fall off, but so the water can't get up in there. And uh, the calcium will form deposits inside the threads. That's why I was having such a tough time getting them off. Also, when you're doing this, make sure this thing doesn't fall off. This is like the adapter for your shifter. It is just literally held on there. By pressure, it will fall off. There is where... Your, that black tube thing's gonna connect to. All right, let's do this. All right, so I manhandled it back up there. Uh, it didn't want to go on at first, so since I put it in forward before I took this apart, I was able to rotate the prop shaft, and it rotated the drive shaft, and then uh, it went into the engine like it was supposed to. So it's a little tip. You don't have to spin the flywheel if you put it in first before you take it down. Uh, now I'm just going to tighten up the bolts. Alright, so I forgot to turn the camera back on. But uh, be sure you check it before you go launch. A little bucket and some water works a lot better than the earmuffs. Thanks for watching.